Guys, we've done a lot of awesome trails in our Jeep Gladiator, and it always amazes us of just how capable these things are. So maybe you're trying to get out there and explore and find out what the capabilities of your Gladiator are, and maybe you've already done some basic upgrades like a lift kit, larger tires, small things like that. But in this video, we're gonna talk about some more advanced upgrades that are gonna set your Gladiator apart and make it capable of that next level of harder trails. So to start, it's no secret that the front axle on the JT and the JL is probably the weakest link on anything on the Jeep. So one thing you can do to mitigate any risks of breaking something is upgrading to RCV axle shafts. RCVs are one of the toughest upgrades you can make on the front axle of your JL or JT. Depending on the year of your Gladiator, the front stock axles use a U-joint design, which can lead to a lot of binding especially when you're trying to turn in the rocks. Binding on the Jeep is your biggest enemy and the fastest way to break stuff. The RCVs replace the U-joint design, which can bind at extreme angles with a CV design that keeps a constant speed throughout the steering angle. Especially when you're running larger tires on stock steering, it's important to keep your steering components as frictionless as possible. I was definitely impressed with the difference after you put the RCVs on, especially when you're locked in four low in the front, you could feel that the steering was a lot lighter. The only bad thing about these is that they're a little messy, so don't expect to have shiny clean knuckles. Also, because they are rated for 43 inch tires and made from chromoly, chances are you'll break literally anything else on your rig before you'll ever break these. So steel knuckles was not an upgrade I was planning on doing, and in fact, it wasn't even an upgrade that you hear a lot of people talk about. Depending on the year of your JT or your JL, and depending on the trim level, it might come with the aluminum knuckles from the factory. I believe if you have a Mojave or a diesel, those come with steel knuckles from the factory, but everything else comes with aluminum knuckles. And those are a really big problem because they are prone to bending and in worst case scenarios actually catastrophically breaking, which can rip out everything from underneath your truck and your steering and all of your brake lines and all of that stuff. We ended up learning the hard way just how easy these things can break when we ran into a giant rock on Wheeler Lake. The initial impact ended up bending the pitman arm, but I later found out when I couldn't get a proper alignment that the knuckle was bent. After upgrading, it gave the truck a whole new feel. The front felt more planted on the ground. I don't know how to describe it, but before the steel knuckles, I could almost see a visible bend in the wheel on certain obstacles. And after the steel knuckle upgrade, all of that play was gone. All right guys, so yes I know, wireless car play is not the biggest priority for off-roading, but this company called One Car Stereo ended up sending me a wireless car play adapter and they were like, hey, you should try this out because your life is crazy, you've got the kids, you guys are off-roading and filming, you've got wires and cords everywhere, and they said, we think that our wireless car play will make your life a little bit simpler because you won't have to worry about one more cord whenever you're going on your adventures. And I have to say, this thing is pretty freaking cool. It's really easy to set up, and it's basically just plug and play. As soon as you turn the truck on, it asks you to connect to the phone one time, and then it automatically connects every time after that. It even has the ability to connect to Wi-Fi via your cell phone's hotspot, or something like Starlink, and you can play your favorite Barely Made It videos on the dash while you're waiting for your buddies before the trail. So if you guys think that's cool and you're looking for an easy way to support the channel, they gave us an affiliate link that I'm gonna put down in the video description. Five thirteens were a massive help on the trail and just driving in general. It made everything feel more manageable for the motor because the three sixes in here don't have a ton of torque. So five thirteens was the perfect gear ratio, especially up here in the mountains. Um, even down in Texas, I went down to Dallas a couple of months ago with the truck. It felt fine at sea level too. So it really, really helps, especially when you're on the trail to have that extra gear ratio. So anytime you introduce speed into any kind of off-roading with these, especially on the stock axles, that's when you can run into trouble. And so having that lower gear ratio allows you to kind of crawl much slower. I would definitely recommend 
recommend 513s. I've talked to a few other people that went with 488s up here in the mountains and they said that they were not happy with the results from the 488s. So 513s seem to be perfect for us and I am loving them. Even on the highway, I'm getting about 17 and a half miles per gallon when we're going to and from places on long trips. Here locally, I'm getting about 14, 15 miles per gallon, which actually isn't too bad, but the gas mileage definitely is worse when you're just like driving back and forth to school and stuff like that. But on long trips, getting almost 18 miles per gallon on 37s, in my book, that's a win. We did go with the Yukon kit, which there's a lot of debate on whether or not those gears are still good or if they have manufacturer's defects or if there's counterfeits. I'm at about 13,000 miles since we did the re-gear and I haven't had any problems. I'm not expecting to have any problems, so fingers crossed, but we love the 513s and we definitely recommend them. I'm not sure if you guys are noticing a trend or not here yet, but a lot of the upgrades that you're doing are going to be done on the front axle. This is kind of the weak point on this configuration and it's because of this guy right here, the FAD. This is the front axle disconnect and it basically meant that Jeep had to cast this in two separate parts so you don't get the same strength as you would on some in the rear axle. One thing you can do is a Barnes truss and C gusset and this is going to increase the strength of the front axle tenfold allowing you to run bigger tires and just have a more confident feel in your front axle when you're off-roading most of the time when these front axles fail they fail right here because of this fad so this kind of mitigates some of that risk of cracking the front axle at the fad So if you guys have watched the channel for any period of time, you'll know that I've had a hell of a time with bushings on the tie rod and the drag link. I've replaced them like two different times with two different manufacturers. And right now I'm on the Fusion tie rod and drag link set, which is the 2.5 ton aluminum set. I will say that having the aluminum drag link is key and I never thought I would actually need it until I actually needed it because I always thought, okay, I'm going to watch exactly which rocks I'm going to go on and make sure I have perfect tire placement, but that's not always realistic. So having the aluminum tie rod is a game changer because if it ever gets stuck on rocks, it'll just bend and then snap right back into position. So I would highly recommend the fusion tie rod. Now the fusion drag link. This guy absolutely sucks. I've got the original uh, 2.5 ton ends on it, and within five months of owning it, it started flopping like crazy. It's actually now hitting my stabilizer when I'm at full lock. So I will be going with the RPM drag link as soon as possible, and I'm hoping that will be the last drag link that I will ever have to purchase. All right, guys, what did you think of our upgrade list? These are advanced upgrades that, in my opinion, are gonna make your Jeep as strong as possible so you don't ever have to worry when you're hitting the tough trails that you're gonna break stuff or run into any kind of an issue. With the way we've got it set up right now, there's really no hard trail that we can't do with this truck. So we hope you got some value out of this video and let us know what you thought of our list in the comments and we'll see you on the next one.